Hello, 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 Lime Green Squid. Welcome back to Dragon's Dogma 2 Character Creator Part 2. Here I'm creating and editing some of my old characters and going to rant about those little red flags that I mentioned in the last video. More like minor nitpicks that could lead into problematic trends. Just ideas that I noticed while doing the character creation thing alone. There are no non-binary or transgender choices, which is unusual for this day and age, but it is a strictly Japanese game, and they are very strict in what they allow over there. Not to say that it's justified or understandable, but that's just Japan's thing. I see that there are far fewer colors at the beginning, but that was true of the first game. You had to uh, get a certain get to a certain point, or you had to buy certain dyes to get the different colors, like green skin, blue hair, that kind of stuff. Or you had to beat the game and unlocked it for your next New Game Plus. I also find there are fewer hairstyles. Maybe there are just as many, but there are fewer that are really good. There are a couple that are amazing, like the curly hair that I have right now, but most of them are a little bit lackluster. What happened to the long, wavy Gandalf hair that was just parted in the middle? You know, the absolute archetype of the perfect hairstyle. Long, wavy hair parted in the middle. <laughs> but it's it's not present anymore. There's, there's sort of curlyish, short, long hair. And there's sort of that long hair that I gave to my big, giant uh, Frank Zappa kind of guy. But that ties up in a strange braid in the back instead of just flowing down. And that's a little disappointing. Also noticing about the hair is that it asks you to choose which part of the hair directs the sheen of the shine. But shouldn't that be governed by the lighting in the game itself? Something is telling me this game is not as high-tech as it presents itself to be. Oh well, like I said, minor nitpicks. I finally dived into some of the videos about this game, because I like to make myself completely clueless. I like to avoid all news about anything that's coming up so that I'm surprised when I play it and enjoy it despite what other people are saying, or don't enjoy it despite what other people are saying. And I'm actually getting quite excited. It does look to be more like a reskin of the first game, just a lot better looking and maybe a lot denser with things to do. But overall, mechanically, it seems just as clunky and stiff and a little bit awkward. Maybe a lot of those things will be fixed. Like I said, some of my biggest concerns are with the mission system, the quest system. Apparently, it is now only going to be guided by your pawns. They are going to point you in certain directions, if that's where your mission told you to go. But I remember having a lot of trouble figuring out the missions in the first Dragon Stogma, because you would talk to someone, you would go on that mission for them, you would come back specifically with the mission completed for them, they would have an indicator over their head that you need to talk to them, but they wouldn't tell you anything new. They wouldn't discuss anything new. They, nothing would happen. And there was nothing left to do in that mission. A lot of missions ended up that way in the first Dragon's Dogma. So I hope that kind of awkwardness has been fixed. Or at least improved upon so that it's not quite so jarring and unintentionally or intentionally off-putting in playing the game. I know a lot of people are popular with the idea that there should be no map points, there should be no guiding systems, but that's bullshit. It's a video game. You need guiding systems. You need to know where to go. The freedom to explore is always there for you. If you can't choose to explore even though there are markers on the map, that's a you problem, not the game problem. Those markers are there for you to choose to look for. The entire world is there for you to explore. <laughs> Only use the markers when you're tired of exploring. That's that's how you play these games. You explore the hell out of them. You don't pay attention to the maps or the markers. You get quests, you talk to people, you collect shit. And then eventually 
after exploring, looking for everything that you want to look through, getting upgraded beyond what you normally would be upgraded, and feeling like a badass entering all your new situations, only then do you finally start your missions. Only then do you start following the map markers. That's what they're for. That's how you play these games. You explore first, make the world your bitch, and then you tackle the missions that the people are giving you. <laughs> Although sometimes tackling the missions does give you extra bonuses and benefits that are crucial to the game. So do those, obviously. But don't forget to sniff the flowers along the way. Just stop and take a look. Explore. That's what Elden Ring was about, too. You just look around this huge world and you find shit that is ready to kill you and also shit that is ready to help you kill those things. <laughs> and it's wonderful for that. But it also has that little sight of grace arrow pointy thingy, <laughs> if you know what I mean. A direction indicator. And there's... and you can place some markers. A game without any markers at all? I don't know. Hopefully the pawns don't throw me in too many directions that are off. I saw one video that uh, the pawn directed them to a locked door that nobody could open, but it was a pre-build of the game, so maybe that part of the game just wasn't built yet. Anyway, I think I'm done with my rant here. I am excited to play the game. I hope that I can afford it anytime soon. Possibly by next year, when all the patches and problems have been worked out. That's usually the best time to buy one of these games, but then nobody's playing. Well, nobody's watching videos about it anyway. <laughs> People still play these games for a long time. Well, enjoy my creation of my sexy chubby lady characters, and I will see you next time. Lime Green Squid out. Dragon's Dogma character creator. The first game was super fun. All this game needs to be is exactly the same, but a little bit better. Absolutely beautiful and goddess-like. Nice. I like her. Exactly the type to turn my head while walking down the road. After finding the tiling option for the tattoos, I just had to try it out. Just making multiple copies over and over across the entire body just to see how much is covered. It doesn't cover the feet, which are absolutely perfectly done. Look at that sculpt. The lighting... Such beautiful footwork in this game. Despite that the toes didn't quite all move individually, they are crafted so well. Lighting change. Nice firelight. Some of the light was under the soles, so I thought that was interesting to take shots from, as well as that kind of side lighting. Looks really pretty on the ankles and stuff. The toes kind of move, but I think they all move as one, one unit. <laughs> Bye.
There are no flares in the F, so I check to see what other weird letter I can use. Ultra? Sure. Ultra made sense for some reason in my head because, hey, that's the female version of Ultra, right? <laughs> Forgetting that the word Ultra is its own word. Alright, and here are our characters. That's the one that I created originally. That's the one my wife created originally. This one she created based on a dream she had of some guy that uh, showed up in it. <laughs> and this one is the one I made recently. You guys watched that just now. Oddly, she looks almost exactly like a neighbor of ours. It's kind of freaky. It wasn't intentional. As for the others, here's the main pawn that I made. The next one. <laughs> Creepy, crooked old mage. I love him. I love his design. I should probably make that my design. <laughs> and there's another one that my wife created. We'll end this here. Lime Green Squid out. I'm excited. That's interesting. <laughs> I don't feel very good. <laughs> Trust in me. Sonic the Hedgehog got old. Kind of gives me a Seska vibe. Star Trek Voyager, anyone? That's just the kind of face you picture on Evil Lynn or on people named Michelle. Take it down! Take it down! Take the fucking elephant! Sh <laughs> Line with the wolf haircut. She's uh, Babadook's mother. The woman that gets stabbed in Matrix Revolutions. <laughs> Cross-eyed or fish-eyed? Cross-eyed or fish-eyed?